Hi, it's future editing Dave here doing a voiceover because, well, Dave's dumbass uh, cameraman forgot to plug the microphone in, so I got like halfway through this video before realizing it wasn't plugged in yet. Oh. Anyway, so voiceover. This is my Amazon uh, Kindle Paperwhite. It's, I don't know, three, four, five years old or something. It's quite old now. And um, I've been having issues with it for like months where uh, the touchscreen would uh, intermittently work and not work and I, of course without the touchscreen you can't use it it's got no other uh, controls on it so it's really annoying and no amount of resetting sort of uh, fixed anything so I uh, finally got jack of this thing it's now just completely not working and the other thing is is that uh, it's not charging either it's um yeah so is the battery dead in it I don't know it's not doing anything so it looks like it might be a combination of faults or faults could be actually be re related we don't know until we play around with it so let's take it apart and yeah, you can actually uh, like press and hold the reset button to like uh, reset the things like you hold it for 10 or like a minute and it's supposed to like completely reset the CPU and uh, stuff like that. So I've tried that. None of that uh, seems to work. So uh, nothing left. Let's take it apart. I really had uh, quite a bit of trouble actually getting my little uh, plastic spudger. You don't want to use a metal spudger because then if it slips, you can actually, you know, <laughs> put a big mark across the uh, screen. I had actually a lot of trouble trying to get this under and uh, pry it out. But I found that uh, if you do it from the power connector end, there was a bit more give under there, which allowed me to get it under. I finally got it, though. So the front is just uh, stuck on with some adhesive and then you've got like a dozen screws to get this thing out. That's actually a lot of um, screws to, like that adds a lot of production cost uh, to the unit. Somebody's actually got to screw all these screws in. Like it's an alloy uh, frame. Don't know whether or not it's a magnesium alloy or not. And then the whole thing just uh, lifts out easily and uh, you can see that there's a little um, RFID tag on the back because it doesn't actually uh, connect uh, to anything. It's not like a Wi-Fi or an antenna. It's that is the RFID tracker that they use when it goes through the conveyor belts on the production line and stuff. Um, they have to identify these units and this is uh, this is the way they do it at various uh, production assembly steps. I'm not sure of the exact you know thing. It's all closely guarded. Amazon's secret, of course. Um, but yeah, that just allows you to individually identify each unit with a uh, remote uh, sensor. So here's the uh, completed assembly. Very nice. Everything's under a metal uh, can, of course. And the battery, um, there it is. Lithium polymer job, uh, five and a quarter watt hours. And it's easily replaceable. So, you know, hats off. They've made these uh, things, you know, simple to, um, easy to replace. I mean, it wasn't hard to get the front panel off. And if you can just unscrew that, then any uh, Joe Average can uh, replace the battery in their Kindle by the looks of it. And yeah, the main PCB, everything's under the metal cans. And unfortunately, I uh, can't get those off. They seem to be uh, soldered down. So we're not going to see much at all. And there's our uh, e-paper uh, display driver. And it looks like we've got some uh, charge pump uh, caps there, but uh, nothing else doing. There's nothing wrong with that. And here is where we might potentially have an issue. This is our uh, touchscreen uh, connector there and our touchscreen controller. I believe it's like a capacitive uh, touchscreen. And it, yeah, so there could be like some connection issue in there perhaps, but I don't know until um, that we solve the problem of, well, I'm going to solve the battery charging problem first. I'm not going to jump into the uh, touchscreen uh, controller. It's more likely to be a battery when you're like you're trying to solve, troubleshoot these things. You want to do the easiest stuff work. You don't want to go down the rabbit hole of the uh, touchscreen uh, controller and all the dicky little connections in there and things like that. Um, yeah, solve the charging issue first and you might find that the touchscreen controller issue was related to the battery. I mean, the battery's easy to solve. <laughs> we can just take it out. So the battery just uh, lifts out here and then it's just got some uh, spring contacts onto a, a PC board in, in there and that's going to have some uh, battery protection as well. But have a look at the contacts though. There's actually four pins and it's not like a temperature uh, sensing pin for like overcharge and stuff like that. No, they're SDA and SCL. So that's an I2C interface that no doubt has an annoying um, like ID chip in it and the software, they've protected these things. So if you put in an aftermarket like a battery that doesn't have the correct ID in it, hasn't spoofed the ID, then it's going to pop up with an error message, you know, probably saying, you know, invalid battery or something, you know, not authorized by Amazon, by your Amazon overlords. And uh, yes, please buy a genuine one and oh, bugger off. 
But the good thing is, though, that that ID chip should be on the protection uh, PCB in there. So we should just be able to, if there's anything wrong with the battery, we should just be able to replace the uh, cell inside there, but keep the PCB. So it has the genuine chip in there, so it'll think it's a genuine battery, but we've just replaced the cell. And that's how you can get around this. So let's see if this has any juice left in it. 2.86 volts. Well, no, that's not good enough. That's usually below uh, the operating voltage of um, the, the, like a device with a lithium uh, polymer lithium ion battery like this. Uh, but it is above the like typical uh, dead cell uh, protection voltage of like, you know, 2.4, 2.5 volts, something like that to actually protect the cell from over discharge. So it's somewhere in there, but it's not good enough to operate it clearly. All right, so let's do a uh, charge test on this thing to see if it actually charges or not uh, so we're gonna it's uh, normal 3.7 volts but uh, these uh, charge up to 4.2 volts so that's that's the maximum compliant voltage you want to set and the current you want to set uh, it, typically like for something like this you don't want to charge it at 1c so it's 1400 uh, milliamp hours you don't want to charge it at 1.4 amps which would be 1c so we're going to go an order of magnitude less than that to be safe uh, 140 milliamps I don't know what the actual charge rate is uh, for the Kindle but uh, you know this will be nice and safe so let's give it a go. So how do we make contact with this? Well, uh, using the awesome PCBite uh, system. I love these things. I've done a video on the second channel and on the mailbag actually reviewing this. And they're just uh, pressure point uh, contacts, which are just under their own weight, make contact very handy. And they've got the magnetic base and everything. Fantastic. All right, so let's switch it on. And it's instantly gone up to uh, 3.8, 3.9 volts. Wow, that's a significant jump up. I wouldn't... Uh, have expected that perhaps but anyway um yeah it's it's doing there's 140 milliamps going into it but whether or not it retains it yeah that's the trick and it does seem to be like jumping all around the place so it doesn't seem to be doing the normal uh charge curve i think we've got one sick puppy here back to my internal mic now don't Anyway, um, the voltage is rising, so that indicates that it's a charge in curve. So it indicates that it is accepting the charge, which causes the voltage uh, to rise up. So it's doing something. But whether or not it holds it, I don't know. Okay, I pushed it up to 250 milliamps because I'm a rebel. Um, it seems to be holding. Oh, I can just, just can't wait. I'm going <laughs> to disconnect it and uh, see what happens. 3.8 well yeah i would have expected it to drop back i could put a reasonable load on that of course and uh and see if it drops but all right let's do that so let's hook that up to a load well constant current uh let's just draw a small current let's just draw like 50 i don't want 50 amps um oh five enter okay 50 milliamps constant current so i'll turn that on let's you know expect it to drop a little bit let's see if it like dramatically plummets and yeah, it dropped right down to 3.03. So it can't even sustain a uh, like 50 milliamp current. So yeah, that battery's all show and uh, no capacity. So yeah, there's something something wrong with that. And look, it's just, oh, no, it's going up. It's, it's jumping all over the place, actually. It's a bit jackrabbity. Yeah, something very wrong with that battery. Let's try 10 milliamps. Series resistance is uh, is very high. That indicates that, yeah, it's uh, gone the way of the dodo. Let's just wind that up and see at what point it just dies. 20 milliamps, come on. A battery like that that can't deliver 20 milliamps, 30 milliamps is just, yeah, hopeless. It's not even going to get to 100 milliamps before it's just, yeah, it's, it's toast. That will work very nicely, thank you very much. So I've got the probes on the back like that. All right, so let's give this a bowl. I've got it uh, 3.7 volts, which is, you know, nominal for a lithium polymer. Um, half an amp because, well, it might turn on the Wi-Fi or something like that. So push this. The button's a bit tricky. 170 milliamps. It's working. It's booting. It's booting. Woohoo! Your Kindle need, needs repair. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah, yeah. Here's the catch. There you go, upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out, repair needed, your Kindle needs repair, please contact Kinder Customer Service, battery invalid, negative one, bastards. Now, unfortunately, um, that's not going to let me test the touch screen, so that's really annoying. We should be able to prise this out, you can see the two terminals in there. So I'll cut those and then that uh, should be safe to actual sell the pouch should just be like stuck in the bottom with some double sided tape or ad adhesive stuff. See if I can prise that battery out. Got to be careful. You don't want to uh, actually pierce the pouch. I can feel it breaking. It's breaking. 
as in the adhesive, that's a metal backing. I thought that was all plastic. It's not. It came out of the frame, the plastic frame, like that. That's interesting. Wow. It's kind of annoying, actually. So I have actually cut both of those tabs on top, and the one down in there does seem to go down to the PCB down in there. Some sort of poly switch, because I want to keep the PCB intact, and then potentially, like, just mount a much smaller battery in there, and then just wire it on. It should work. So it's just a matter of separating the adhesive in there. I'll get it eventually. Outski, you want to dispose of that. DuPont. DuPont no mix. That looks like it's damaged, but that's actually not um, the internal cell. That's just the outer uh, wrap. So, no, I haven't bent, haven't damaged, haven't pierced that. And uh, it's a bit how you're doing. If anyone knows why they use a metal backing on that instead of a, like, a whole plastic carrier, uh, please leave it in the comments. So there's our main board. Is that our main charge controller, or is that a MOSFETI? That looks, for all the world, like a MOSFETI pinout, doesn't it? I think we've got an external FET there. The controller is likely that little sucker down there. There we go. Is that our poly switch? Yes, I do actually have a drawer for this, and yes, it is labelled. There you go. That looks all right. That looks not... Oh, that one looks a bit fatty. Yeah, 1,000 milliamp hour. Whoa, might be a bit too thick. So apart from this little itty bitty thin thing, can't remember where I got that from. Obviously I pulled it out of something. I thought, oh, that really thin one could be useful for something. Um, oh, if you squint, it makes it. And shoving it back in here, yeah, that's really bulgy. Not much uh, thickness left in that to like dig out a, a pouch or anything. Although technically this actually does have a bit milled out of it. You can see all the milling marks and everything, so. If I take out the metal, that might do the bit, you know, it's like 0.1 millimetres, everything counts. Yep, I reckon I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and use that puppy, so I'll solder it in now. If you sit it flat, a little bit of wobble wobble, yeah, but uh, not. Nah. Ah, it's good enough for Australia. Check this out, this is very weird. If I tack the battery on there, which, of course, measures 3.8 volts, no worries, it doesn't come through. Why? It's like the low side MOSFET is off. If I buzz this out, the positive actually goes through to here, no worries, and the low side goes through to the test point here on the one side of the MOSFET, and then on the other side, which is the actual battery negative uh, terminal. No, that's now positive. What? What? That's now a direct continuity. What? So if I take that back, I should be getting... Wow, there's a, there's a dicky contact in there somewhere. I'm going to have to solder that properly. Yeah, so what I've done there is I've just actually removed this uh, metal cap that they had on there and I've also removed tag going over to here and solder does uh, readily take to that side of the fuse so yeah, I uh, the tabs just don't work so I might like put the battery over here and just put some little wires over that's probably easier There we go, that's much better before I cover it up Ta-da! 3.8 volts, no wackers and that'll be good enough for Australia well, it's done something. We're back to that screen. Beauty. So let's plug that in. See if it'll accept charge. Our LED's on. Don't know if it's, uh... Oh, yep, yep, yep. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner, I suspect. Okay, well, it's just done that. I can't remember if you should be able to power these while they're charging, right? Or maybe, I don't know, maybe I have to reset the thing or something. No, it's in... Is it still in its original state? I mean, that... It shouldn't be showing that low a battery. Um, I didn't load that battery down, but I, you know, surely Murphy wouldn't have uh, let me put in another cactus one. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, was that my imagination or did that go up? I think it moved up by a pixel. No, it's not really increasing, unfortunately. Nothing really else around to measure, is there? It's all under the damn cans. So, yeah, unfortunately, I can't get it to uh, do anything. If I hold down the button for 10 seconds, the LED will switch off and stay off, and then when I release the button, it'll come back on. So the processor and stuff is being powered, but I don't know, maybe I have to wait longer, but it's it's not going up. I've waited like half an hour already. It's doing nothing. So what I've been able to do is uh, hold down the reset button for like a minute and like the LED here flashes uh, green briefly and eventually when I release that it clears the screen and puts the charge symbol back on so the like the processor and everything's working it's getting voltage from the battery and every, like it's doing everything it's driving the screen and you know, hunky dory but it refuses to charge by the looks of it anyway and if I have a look at the current monitor 
Look at this, it starts out drawing about 70 milliamps, but now it's drawing 460 milliamps. That's not going into the processor because the Kindle is ridiculously low power. That's constant, like it's charging the battery. Yet there's no ch ind indication that it's charging. Possibly like a secondary fault with the charging chip because the battery was definitely faulty. Oh yeah, there we go, green. Oh, hang on, no, it's doing something. Oh no, oh, there we go, it's back. Oh. So either like it's reporting the state of the battery is too low and it's just switching itself off when there's clearly current going into the battery. I mean, you know, I don't want to have to get out and dick around and trying to get like probes out of there and, you know, try and probe the damn thing while it's charging and stuff like that. I mean, geez, I've already gone down enough bloody rabbit holes. It's doing something. Flash, flash, flash. What does that mean? Woohoo! Hang on, it's finally come good. By the looks of it, I just left it here uh, charging again. Yeah, it's still charging at 460 odd uh, milliamps because it doesn't take that just uh, actively. It takes nothing when it's, because uh, the e-ink uh, displays, of course, take nothing. They just, uh, they don't need any power to actually keep them going. So this thing just sleeps all the time, scanning the uh, touch screen, and then if you touch it, it wakes up and it changes the page or whatever, then it goes to sleep again. So it needs naff all. So all that uh, charging at 460 milliamps, that's all going into the battery at the moment. But it's obviously um, that like minute long reset or a couple of cycles of that um, obviously got the thing working. It was really locked up. So Oh, yeah, yeah, there we go, we're in. And there you have it, it's charging up there. The indicator looks like, oh, but my, hang on, my, my, my touch screen works. Yep, that seems to be working fine. So, uh, ignore the noise in the jackhammering in the background. There's some fit out work going on in the office next door. Um, yeah, it works, and we've got the little leddies down here. Fantastic, winner, winner, chicken dinner, I'm gonna put it back together. Nah, bloody Murphy. Look, I put the front panel back on, the touch screen doesn't work. Maybe there's some alignment issue and it thinks the plastic is touching it, but it should be like a capacitive touch, I think. Okay, this is ridiculous. I can't get this to do anything now. Touch, oh, no, now, now it's, it's done it. Oh, this, oh no, it's resetting. <laughs> this is cursed by Murphy, this one. Anyway, that is the, uh, that is the reboot screen, so I'll get back to you when it's done. Okay, it's going through its full on, maybe it just needed another kick in the pants to give it like a complete system restart. So we might be dealing with uh, software lockup issues instead of hardware here. Oh, seems to be stuck there, bloody non-linear bar graphs. Okay, it seems to be back. Yeah, touch screen's working. It's showing the battery's only very low. Plug that back in and charge it. So it's obviously, you know, it's doing the charging thing. No, I don't think there's anything uh, physically wrong with the touchscreen. I think we're just uh, dealing with software issues because, like, this was my major issue with this. It didn't seem like the battery was failing. It seemed like, you know, the touchscreen was the thing that was um, failing. It was annoying me for like a month. It'd work occasionally, then it wouldn't work, and it was just, it was just really annoying. So it seems to work. So, carefully, you saw it, it's working. Let's put this front cover back on. Please work. It works. <laughs> I think that there's just like really like software lockup issues with this thing. Uh, please, if you've had experience with this, you know of it happened to you, you know of others that this has happened to, uh, please leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, it looks like, yeah, we just had a fail battery that probably led to weird lock software lockup issues and stuff like that. I could never get it. Um, you know, I was trying the reset thing and stuff and that never actually worked. So looks like I had to fix the battery problem and then fix the lockup uh, software problems. It looks like it just went through a hard reboot then. Yep, I think we're good. I'm pretty sure that's gonna charge. So I'm gonna call that a winner and I can use my Kindle again. Thank goodness, oh, what a drama. I know that ended up being like essentially just a simple battery uh, repair, but you know, there's just more to it than that. You could have like gone down the rabbit hole thinking, oh, there's something wrong with the touchscreen and something like that because everything else seemed to be working. So you could have like, uh, chased a red herring down that rabbit hole and uh, no. So anyway, there you go. That is a Kindle repaired <laughs> finally. Oh goodness, what a drama. And the bloody microphone thing. Oh goodness, can't win. So anyway, if you like that and if you like the struggle, <laughs> please give it a thumbs up. As always, discuss down below. You know what to do. Catch you next time.